Our final group of fellows and water school participants are going to talk to you about applying systems thinking to water qual quality and quantity. Uh, this group is comprised of Jay Arbuckle, Associate Professor and Extension Sociologist from Iowa State University, Maria Nelson and Chase C Cummings from Pepin County, and Blake Osborne, a Water Resources Specialist from Colorado State University Extension. So we will start with Jay and take it from there. Here you go. Thanks, Laura. All right, let's see how I get this thing going. Okay, so as uh, Laura said, I'm Jay Arbuckle. I'm from Iowa State University. I'm an extension sociologist, which means I spend a lot of my time doing research on stakeholder perspectives. What are different stakeholders, including uh, extension, but also the Department of Agriculture, Department of uh, Natural Resources, and farmers, and other key stakeholders, what do they think about different issues? And I do that research in order to help everybody get together to solve difficult socio-ecological problems. And so today, I'm going to talk about one of these, which is um, focused on water scarcity in northwest Iowa. OK, so the project that I'm looking at is called Understanding. I, I can't actually see the slide here. Is there any way to see that here? I don't have any notes. I guess I'll just look at the slides. Oh, it's here, but it's tiny. Yeah, it is tiny. Yeah. OK. I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, so uh, the project is called Understanding and Building Capacity to Address Changing Water Availability in the Upper Corn Belt. It is funded by USDA NIFA under uh, Jim's watch, and it's a project, a joint project with the University of Minnesota and Iowa State University. We're um, examining water scarcity issues, doing research in order to inform collaborative governance uh, processes, uh, doing um, basically looking at current and future water use and perspectives on current and future uh, management of groundwater resources in particular. We're doing interviews with stakeholders around in Minnesota and um, in Iowa, and we're also doing survey research on uh, water users to, to gauge their perspectives and plans. Um, I'm only going to be pres uh, pre presenting data on um, or from the Iowa experience. Okay, so step one, uh, we've heard a lot about distinctions and uh, making distinctions and outlining systems, and that was really the first step in our process uh, as we started up this project. We've got a lot of stakeholders, including the livestock industry, we've got dairy processors, um, we've got corn production, we've got cheese production, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And so uh, making those distinctions, who are the stakeholders and what are their parts, was really the first step that the systems thinking approach helped us to uh, move forward on. So our first kind of actor, if you will, or stakeholder, if you will, the central question is where does the water come from? And so water supply in northwest Iowa is um, has its uh, major limitations. Uh, there's two types of aquifers where they draw water supply. One is alluvial surficial aquifers, which you see in that, that image of the, uh, the image in the upper right. You can only access those uh, water sources basically in river valleys where there's streams and rivers. Then there's a deep aquifer, they call it the Cretaceous aquifer or the Dakota aquifer, that is plentiful water, but it has really harsh chemical compounds magnesium, hydrogen sulfide that's bad for human health, and as you'll, I'll talk a little bit more about, really bad for livestock health, and this is a major livestock producing region. Um, so continuing on the making distinctions, I mean, the, and identifying the different stakeholders, another really central player in this big picture is rural water systems. Now, rural water systems uh, were developed in the late 70s uh, due to the kind of scarcity of water, the, the limitations of the sweet, uh, good quality water in the, uh, in the alluvial, alluvial plains. If you weren't located in those areas, it was hard for you to get good water. So rural water systems were established to move, distribute, uh, treat and distribute water out into um, the, the areas of, of green that you see there. Okay, so a really important uh, event happened, I mean, these are, uh, a drought is an event that happens periodically, but in 2012, uh, between 2012 and 2014, we had a major drought in the Corn Belt. It was especially acute in uh, Iowa, in northwest Iowa in particular. Um, 
river reaches went dry, uh, their shallow groundwater levels dropped, and the rural water systems started having a difficult time uh, producing enough water for their customers. Um, one thing that in, in this area, livestock is one of the biggest consumers of water, um, but we also have uh, municipalities, uh, people, just individual farms on rural water, and there's uh, kind of a hierarchy, an order for which uh, that kind of dictates who gets served and when. Humans first, fish second, livestock third. Um, so a couple of the water systems came down to a critical level where they had maybe two weeks of water left. They had millions of animals that if they didn't have water, you can't, when you're raising livestock, you cannot um, conserve water. They actually use more water when it's hot and dry. So they got to the point um, where they had some some very timely rains that, that avoided disaster, but it was a, it was a almost a crisis situation. So uh, speaking of livestock, so it's the number one, I'd say, stakeholder. They use up to, of all of these rural water systems, they use up to 90% of the water, between 60 and 90% of the water in these rural water systems. Uh, we've had massive increases in livestock production in this area from 1.2 million animal units to over 5 million uh, in 2012 to, uh, I'm sorry, 2007 to 5 million animal units in uh, 2017. Livestock receipts represent about half of all agricultural production in this area. Um, it's about $38 billion uh, statewide, which is about half of the agricultural receipts statewide, and represents a substantial amount of employment. Um, and there's a lot of stakeholders in the livestock sector. So you've got the producers of the animals, the, the concentrated animal feeding operations, a lot of chickens, a lot of hogs, a lot of cattle. You've got dairy processors making cheese, making ice cream. Blue Bunny ice cream is made in that factory, if you're familiar with that. And then you have meat packers as well, Tyson Foods. This is a new uh, plant underway. Uh, construction is underway in Eagle Grove, Iowa. And um, so major investments in that. So that first couple stages, the making distinctions and, and, and taking a look at where, who are the stakeholders and what are their parts, that leads to the next stage, which is understanding the relationships and the perspectives. And as a sociologist, that's the most interesting part for me. Um, and so the mapping exercise really, that's when it got really fun. You, you figure out who your stakeholders are, but what's really interesting is figuring out what, what are the relationships between them and then their different perspectives and how those per per perspectives align or misalign. Um, so you can't see that map because I know I was back in the back there. I couldn't see anybody's map. Uh, but I'll kind of walk you through this, uh, some of the central stakeholders here. So we've got the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. We've got the rural water systems. We've got the water supply. We've got industry, which is slaughter facilities, dairy processors, ethanol plants. Um, then we've got the animal feeding operations. Then we've got crop production. So something really important about these relationship flows is you know, Iowa DNR, they regulate several of these actors. They, they tell them how they can treat water, how much uh, water they can withdraw, and so forth. And industry, which is growing very quickly, you saw that plant being built. That, the relationship with animal feeding operations is a huge pull factor, demand for more animals. So, you know, we've had a major increase, but we've got more plants going in. And so we're going to have a more increase of animals. And as we discussed, we have a shortage of water. So something's going to have to give at some point in time. Uh, animal feeding operations, as they grow, they increase the demand for crops, for grain. And I didn't show this on here, but there's a feedback loop that uh, one of the emerging problems is nitrogen <clears throat> that is going uh, draining into the stream beds and then into the alluvial aquifers and increasing nitrogen contamination of that. Um, so, so understanding the relationships is one thing. The next step that we're doing is trying to understand perspectives. The different stakeholders have different perspectives and the degree to which they align or misalign is really important if you're trying to solve, solve the problems. And so this is an example quote. We've been interviewing all of these, <coughs> excuse me, stakeholders doing in-depth interviews. And this is an example quote uh, with somebody from the pork producers who represent livestock producers in the region, and then somebody from the rural water systems. And the question was um, about establishing um, hog barns and getting water to them. And so the question I asked of the pork producers is, 
um, do your members, do they generally communicate with the rural water systems as they're, you know, planning their, their, um, shop, or their, their barns? And the pork producers said, yeah, well, the water plan has to happen somewhere early, early in that planning phase. You're not going to build a barn and then figure out where you're going to get the water. And then the uh, rural water system said, and this is actually, this is one quote, but there are many of these similar ones. Last year, we did 34 add-ons, and 20 of those were hog buildings or cattle. And we've got 10 of them signed up so far this year, and those are the ones we know about. We always expect at least twice that many that we don't know about. We got a call from one saying that they're ready to go. The pigs will be there in two weeks. We didn't even have a line out to them. And so there's a number of these uh, kind of miscommunications going on where the, um, and this actually, it, when um, Mr. Fishman was talking this morning about the invisibility of water, and people just expect water to be there. Even in this place where drought is a problem, water uh, quantity is a problem, they expect that if they build a hog barn, that it's going to be an easy thing just to draw a line out to them. And it's not so simple as that. So um, kind of thinking about the project as a whole, it's an ongoing project. And so we're, we're really, I mean, I basically have taken you up to the point where, where we are on the project, kind of just starting to understand the different stakeholders' perspectives. Uh, the value of, it, of this process to me has been First, mapping the stakeholders has been amazing, you know, documenting those distinctions and systems, the, uh, you know, taking stock of the different stakeholders and actors, um, investigating the relationships and the perspectives, documenting them. Um, a lot of interrelated actors, some with misaligned perspectives, as we saw. Um, and then that, of course, helps us to identify areas where collaboration and communication can be improved, hopefully. And so our Long-term hope, well, it's not that long-term because the project is only two years, uh, or three years, depending, um, it was to inform a collaborative governance process. So we're going to be talking about presenting our results at, at uh, several different uh, events, including like rural water systems meetings, uh, to get the different stakeholders together to talk about the different perspectives that we have documented and then take those mental models, see how they match up, and see how we might do a better job of aligning them. Um, with that, I just want to lead you with a, leave you with a quote. This is from uh, the director of the Iowa <clears throat> Department of Natural Resources. Uh, this was a meeting a few weeks ago about drought situation. We actually are coming into another dry time. Um, and it's, if we have a situation where the water dries up, there's no way we'll be able to truck enough water in for those animals and no way to truck all those animals out. If the water runs out, the public will ask the rural water systems, where's my water? Then they'll go to the state and say, how could you let that happen? And so I think this project we're hoping, and through the, the kind of recursive uh, systems thinking activities that we're doing, will help to inform the collaborative governance problem or a process that will hopefully solve the crisis before it happens. That's it. Thanks.